with this damage here. Come on, folks. This is total decay right here. How in the world would you expect this? to even support anything holy cow hey everybody jeff here welcome back to the channel you know we have some breaking news on that forbes avenue bridge collapse in frick park in pittsburgh pennsylvania this morning and so today we're going to show you uh, a bunch of photographs a little bit of video and we're going to try to analyze this bridge failure and we're going to try to come up with a root cause for you on what caused this bridge to collapse let's see if we can do it the Fern Hollow Bridge that so many people use. This is a live picture right now from our photojournalist on the ground. What Pittsburgh Public Safety is saying is that police, firefighters, and paramedics are on the scene now and that there is a strong odor of natural gas in the area. It's located in Pittsburgh on the western side of the state of Pennsylvania. And let's zoom into it and see exactly where it is. So there's your bridge right here. Here's Forbes Ave at the intersection of Braddock Avenue. And as we zoom in, this Forbes Avenue bridge is also known as the Fern Hollow Bridge because they call this area Fern Hollow. And so there it is. It's just a very simple 400 foot long bridge. Okay, so the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation has a website where they track the bridge conditions. So th what we want to do is look up that bridge on there and see what was their last opinion of this bridge. Here, we're going to zoom into this area here where Frick Park is, and here's where the bridge is. All right, so now we'll zoom in onto Frick Park, and we know that the bridge is located right here on Forbes Avenue near the intersection of South Braddock Avenue. And it goes over this ravine, and there should be a creek there, and I know there's a, a running trail as well. Now, the reason why this box is red is because when you look over here on their chart, it's showing here the local bridges that are in poor condition. So I'm like, wow, okay, well, let's go take a look at see if they have a report on it. Okay, so let's take a look at their report on this bridge and what they're doing here. So we know it's in Allegheny County, we know it's in Pittsburgh, and it's near Braddock Avenue and Forbes Avenue. And like I said, remember the nine mile run and uh, the Fern Hollow there? What we have here is this bridge is 447 feet long. It has a deck area of 28,608 feet, and it has three spans. Although when you look at these pictures here, you can see it looks like that the collapse occurred in uh, more sections than that. So it, it wasn't quite clean breaks across those main three spans. Some of them broke into in half, it looks like. And so the material here is steel. The structure type is a rigid frame, and it was built in 1970, so it really doesn't seem like that old of a bridge. So this might likely be not so much of a design issue and more or less a maintenance issue, or maintenance combined with weight, or maybe a little bit of design issue combined with weight, combined with maintenance. It's no surprise that it collapsed on the day where there was snow on it so the snow adds a lot more load as well and here you can see the weight limit is 26 tons and so this is going to come into play when the NTSB comes in to investigate this collapse of the Forbes Avenue bridge here in Pittsburgh they're going to be looking at like okay how many vehicles were on there what did they weigh uh, they're going to try to calculate the depth of the snow and the weight of the snow and how much load it was putting on the bridge combined with the fact that it was rated poor overall condition here see rated four level four and they're going to be see here's all their levels right here the substructure condition was satisfactory the superstructure was poor though so all they're going to be looking at all of this they're going to be taking the metal and doing samples of the metal to see if there was something wrong with the metal was it was the metal fine did the cold make the metal brittle was there um, bad uh, metallurgy going on there were there other hybrid metals mixed in with it during the manufacturing of it that made it weaker that it was just a matter of time those are all the questions they're going to be looking at Okay, now the Pittsburgh Public Safety put out some really good pictures here uh, this morning about this. So here we're looking at the bridge. The bridge just collapsed here. And you're because they're looking over the ledge here, you're not seeing most of the bridge. But this view is from the Braddock Avenue side looking towards, the, remember, the gatehouse. And one thing you can notice here, here's that construction seam. And I think that it just broke cleanly right there. It sheared right there. And so I think they're going to be focusing on here too. Why did it just shear off so cleanly? There was a designed to with that construction joint. Did something happen here to cause it to sag and just collapse in the middle? And that, then if that falls down, it sure it'll it should pull it off of there, and it pulled it cleanly. So it, this is what the NTSB is going to be looking at and how it buckled in sideways like this. 
Here's another view where that where I guess they got closer up to it. Same same view, same direction. Look at this. You got one of those double buses there. And this looks like another section of the slab that may be flipped upward. Here you got a car upside down here. I'm like, holy cow. The car was trying to enter onto the bridge and maybe this the bridge slid down and it caused him to flip backwards there but man and we're lucky nobody got killed so far as long as we know um 10 people were injured but what it didn't say in the chart was exactly its elevation over the bottom of this ravine that's right here but here's another interesting thing look at this particular section here look how it caved in in the middle like from right to left and and left to right here see so that's kind of a strange failure it was almost as if something here kind of gave in now remember this is a three span section but i'm counting one two three here this might be a fourth and this might be a fifth here so the investigators are going to be looking into this as well like how did it collapse into into these pieces and again here on this side of the bridge you have a nice clean cut likely because there was a construction joint right here an isolation seam whatever you want to call it everybody calls them different things here and notice how the support bent we're going to start here at the intersection of braddock and forbes and i'm going to turn around to show you because there's where the, the bridge is coming up over here so it's actually a very beautiful street i mean who would know as you're getting ready to enter this bridge which starts right here that there was something wrong here and and man i tell you it looks so much different like this than it was with all the snow and you, you have a hard time telling what's wrong with the sections let me put this into full screen mode and so here's the beginning of the bridge and i wanted to look around and see why they have a poor condition rating on it and, you know you can see a lot of the concrete here is pretty uh chipped up this might just be superficial this is the sidewalk remember the structure under here is, is supposed to be steel and there's supposed to be three spans so let's just go across remember 400 plus feet not too much there uh, I wanted to take a look at what's going on here. Uh, it just looks like some patches. This drain looks like it's clogged. As we keep going forward over here, this kind of has me a little bit worried. Not too, but then, um, if uh, sometimes you can't tell if these are cracks or if they're just marks, you can see something's happening in this spot here. Not sure if that's indicative of anything, but you can see it's pretty close to the middle of the bridge. And you got more concrete deterioration right over here. And we're almost across the other side. You see a little more concrete degradation. Look at this, see chipping, cracking. Not even sure if that would qualify as spalling because I don't see any rebar poking through. I kind of loosely use that term to refer to any concrete that's coming off in chunks. And then here's the other side of it, the other end of it. I mean, this is just a beautiful street going through Frick Park here, going right over the Nine Mile Trail. And I think there's a creek, but you know, what a gorgeous run this is here. Do we see anything else here? Not really. Nothing that, that just like leaps out. However, this appears to be a um, construction joint where I think it sheared off right here. And even though there's three spans, it looks like it broke off in five or six sections. But look at this, you have more damage over here. What we don't have is any pictures from underneath. But you can see how the concrete all the way across there, the the curb is just not looking that I mean, look, here's your bridge. It's It's nothing huge. So what was wrong with it? See a little bit of rust on the, the railings here. Does that mean there was a lot of rust underneath as well? Okay, so the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette here had some uh, good aerial shots here. Here's some good close-up shots they had of the collapsed bridge. There's where the bus is right there. There's a great aerial shot right there of the bridge. There's where the bus is again. A few cars flipped over. Okay, now WPXI had this drone footage here. So check this out. They got in real close up here to see exactly what was going on. There's your tipped over car over here on the upper left. The bus, of course. Pretty interesting how it looks like this segment here raised up from this one. And then you got this little subsection here that just kind of ripped down, folded over and under. But that's what saved the bus. The bus was rolling backwards, and luckily nobody on board got hurt. There was a driver 
and two passengers, and they all walked off the bus. But one of the passengers, I think, later went to the hospital because he wasn't feeling right later on. Here you can see that CBS2 in Pittsburgh had a video of President Biden. He showed up on the scene and was checking out the bridge collapse on his way to give a speech on infrastructure. Now, to determine how this Forbes Avenue bridge in Pittsburgh might have failed, we need to know what type of a bridge structure it is. And, and it says that it is a um, metal rigid frame bridge. Now, here's an example of a concrete rigid frame. But basically, it just means it's sort of monolithic all the way across. But let's look at the other one. All right, so when you're looking at the different types of rigid frame bridges, you got a V-shaped, which looks kind of like this. That isn't quite the type that we have here. It's similar, but I'll show you what it really is. What we really have is what we call a batter post on this bridge design. And it's usually designed like, you see this picture here? So the bridge goes across like this, and then you have your structural support elements like this going on to a heavily fortified concrete or whatever they decide to go with on the edges. However, in this case, they don't have that. So you see how this bridge here, which appears to be mostly concrete, all done as a most likely a single pour, they, they terminate on concrete pads. So you're going to see that what we're really looking at is something more like this, where you got the, the span that goes over the ravine, and then you have the support on either side here that terminates. So let's take a look at our bridge. So as you can see on this batter post rigid frame bridge, you got the four components, one, two, and then there's two on the other side that are hidden by the tree here. And you can see the cross braces. You see that right there, cross brace there. So this is the structure of this batter post bridge. Very simple design. So why did it fail? Let's take a closer look. Here's a different view that shows where you can actually see both sides. You see how they have all of the, the cross braces here going down on, on these two on this side of the bridge. And then over here on the left side of the bridge, you see the cross braces. And you see here, they're terminating into these small concrete pads that are just sitting on the hill. And then here is another angle that somebody shot here right by the side of the bridge by that gatehouse. You're looking straight down the bridge. So here's the left side of the bridge and there's the cross braces. And then there's the right side. Now look how, at least from this point to me, this really looks kind of spindly. I don't have a warm and fuzzy about this design here. I don't know what it was they saw that said it was poor. Maybe somebody came and painted this later. I don't know. But this looks spindly to me, and I question whether it can really handle the weight. Maybe they designed it right. I, I don't know. I don't like the fact that you get this little concrete pad just sitting on the edge of the hill instead of some big, massive pour of concrete like they've done in the past. Now, it may be there's some there. I can't tell on the other side whether there was concrete poured. It might have been, but something doesn't look right over here. And then, look, you can see all of the rust pouring down so certainly the way this can things connected at the bottom look at all of that rust I'm I wouldn't be surprised if this was the cause of the collapse of your bridge right here is if this rust right here just broke free and then boom all you got to do is lose one of your supports and is as tight and tightly knit together as this bridge is it could still potentially collapse in the middle there you you lose one side of it is the other side really necessarily going to pick up the slack for you well we don't know and then with the snow on there it, it didn't look like there was a huge amount of snow i couldn't really tell you know you have my thoughts on this and then look at this too here's your drainage pipes well what if these get clogged and frozen in the in the winter time remember i showed you how that grading on the the bridge when we drove across the bridge there on google maps on the street view we showed you how that that one grading looked like it was clogged so Maybe water's not draining off as well as it could be. Who knows? Is there water stuck in all of these pipes that's frozen as well? We don't know. But take a look at this, folks. This is some very incriminating evidence here for us. Because look what this Dr. G. Kochansky wrote back on December 29th, 2018. I hope someone is keeping an eye on the underside of the Forbes Avenue bridge over Frick Park. One of the big X-beams is rusted through entirely. And yes, I see the cables. So it's probably not a crisis. So he's referring to these. These cables look like they were put there to stay what was going on. So look at this, though. Man, that's that doesn't look very good. And look how bad it's rusting 
Remember what I said? I, I saw that I showed you the pictures of the rust dripping down. Look at this. This thing's almost eaten through to the core. Now, if you had seen this picture, would you want to be driving over this Forbes Avenue bridge in Frick Park in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, folks? Man, I sure wouldn't be. And I'd be screaming up and down and getting the news on there and getting them to come show this and make this one a high priority. We know there's 47,000 or so bridges around that are in really bad shape. And here's a much better, higher resolution photo of this. So look at this damage here. Come on, folks. This is total decay right here. How in the world would you expect this to even support anything? Holy cow. This, to me, is no longer rated at 26 tons. I don't even know what it would be rated at, but it's certainly not rated at 26 tons. Look at the, look how it was just eaten away at this, you know? And I ha can't help but think as if, if just maybe 10, 20 years ago, somebody had come in here, sprayed primer and paint to seal this up, maybe it wouldn't have rusted through like this. So far, nobody was, was killed, but about 10 people were injured. This does not speak good to whoever is in charge of making sure the bridges are safe. And in fact, as soon as a bridge gets a poor rating, somebody ought to be looking into it immediately. So those are my ideas on what I think is the root cause of the collapse of this Forbes Avenue bridge in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So, hey, NTSB, you can go home. I got this. <laughs> hey, so listen, I want to hear from you folks. Let us know down in the comments below there what your ideas are for what maybe caused this collapse. I especially want to hear from structural engineers and bridge engineers as to why you think this bridge came down on this snowy day in Pittsburgh. And of course, my story could change too as more other evidence comes to light and more photographs, you know, better testing and witness accounts and things like that. That could change my mind as well. And if you haven't been to our channel here before, make sure you check out the other videos we've done on the engineering disasters. You can see them right over here. Just click on this video list here and go ahead and binge watch all of those videos we've done here on the Champlain Towers condominium collapse here in Surfside in Miami, Florida. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight, folks, and we'll see you on the next one.